Hi, guys. So just to let everybody know, my name is Charlie McGowan. I am a PDM expert here at uh, Inflow Technology, which is a subsidiary of CATI. But, you know, I, I still actually I work for CATI as well. What I work with day in, day out is what's called the PDM system. I'm hoping and assuming that most of you here are probably already familiar with PDM, which is what I actually have on the right hand side my screen here, you'll see that it looks a little familiar if you've used the, uh, the SOLIDWORKS PDM interface here. So with the PDM interface, what you can do is basically do process and version control of your files. But it does have a few limitations, much like SOLIDWORKS, where SOLIDWORKS is not available on all operating systems. And it's also not available for like, you know, your cell phone or things like that. And um, same with PDM as well. PDM really is only uh, natively, at least, installed on Windows operating systems. It sort of has some limitations with that. So in addition to your standard PDM system, which just to give you a brief overview of what this looks like, these green folders here allow me to do process control for my files here. So if I have an assembly, I can actually select it and I can preview it here in this window. I can move it around and we can get a, a good view of sort of what we're looking at. Plus we have uh, metadata assigned to each item in here. And as I select different things, you can see that these fields update with different bits of metadata. Metadata is used for sorting all of your information. And basically you can also search against it. So if I go back to the very root folder here of this vault and I, I run a search here, interface here, I do 4240, and I go ahead and search against that. Now here's that spreader tool that I was just looking at, and I can use that metadata that's inside it to basically navigate straight to it. Now, this on the right-hand side is using Windows Explorer, and so without ever having a web interface, this looks pretty familiar to you guys, you know, because we can I can navigate to my C drive. And much like using Google Drive or a Dropbox folder, I have this special vault view inside of the PDM here. Now, how does this actually work with Web 2? Well, what they did is they actually created a web interface for PDM here. And let me uh, get this here. There we go. And the web interface allows a little bit more versatility as far as operating systems go, because using a web interface, you're no longer limited to this thick client, which is actually, you know, down here in the system tray. This is showing me that the PDM is, I can log in and log off of it down here. This is the little, notice that the icon is the same here. Um, and, but if I was a Mac user, or if I was on my cell phone, I wouldn't have access to this information. Um, with the Web2 interface, which we have over here, I can actually log in and now I've got access to this if I'm using Apple computing or if I'm using um, my cell phone, it has a mobile interface as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna log in here and we will navigate to the root folder here. Logged in and notice that the folders are the same. So I've got administrative. It basically gives me this Windows Explorer interface here, but in a web format. So if I wanna drill down and, or if I just wanna find that same file I was looking for earlier, I can search for it and here it is. So those are the two different files I was looking at earlier. And if I click on these, it'll actually navigate me right to where I was before. So engineering products, so if I go to engineering, products, industrial equipment, power tools, Omatro rescue tool, here it is. This is the same thing. Now notice that it has this little button here with the E drawing symbol. Um, if I click on this, then it actually does a file conversion real quick and it boots up E drawings in this web browser. Now I'm gonna maximize this so you can see what it looks like. And in here, if I click and drag, I can actually move this around in the web browser. Plus, if I hit this play button here, it'll actually give me uh, just a preview of all of these different views so you can get a good look at the, uh, the item you're, you're trying to investigate, right? Now, not only that, but what PDM offers as well is it offers revision control. So 
in this interface on the right hand side, um, I can come in here and I can assign a revision to this and basically send it through an approval process saying, is this good to go? Is this ready for customers? Well, uh, you, on the left hand side, it gives me information. Okay, well, this is checked in. The PDM system kind of works like a library. You check stuff in and you check stuff out. When you check stuff out, much like taking a book from the library, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, and you can you can make modifications to it. Obviously, you know, if this was a true library, you wouldn't want to modify a book, but you know, this is your engineering project. So you are going to be making changes to these things. And so from the web two interface, I can actually come in and check stuff out and make changes. So um also I can do explosions if I had actually uh built out an explosion. I can look at those here as well. I can do um basically cut fields and see here. Go, but I want to do this. There we go. So now I've got this. And I can take a look at this and still move it around with the cut plane on it. So it's pretty powerful for actually taking a look. And I'm just using my mouse here to navigate with this. So if I if I click and, and navigate and then use my mouse wheel to zoom in and out, I've got all that. Now I've also got you know view control on the on the right hand side if I want to see these things. Um, and I can even come back in and explode it and then cut it in half as well. So now the data card, as I was mentioning earlier, um, this metadata is captured by your users. So as they start to add files and parts into here, they can add metadata that actually says, okay, who created this? When was it created? Who checked it? Is this a vendor item? If so, who's the vendor? And uh, what what's our cost for this? What's the material? What's the weight? These are all different things. Plus we have a comments field. Um, and a watermark. So as it moves through uh, the workflow, the watermark gets applied to the SLD DRW, which is the SOLIDWORKS drawing file. So now all of this metadata here, I have access to it online. The interface is a little bit different because these cards right here are handmade using basically a Visual Basic backend, if you're familiar with Visual Basic. And so that's why it looks really nice and fancy. On the website though, it's a little bit more HTML friendly. So it doesn't actually have the same fields lined up in the same order, but it does offer the same amount of information. Now, the other thing PDM allows you to do is it allows you to store information per configuration. Notice that the weight in this configuration changes a little bit compared to the, the um, original file. So if I slip into open JAWS here, we can see that we've got different configurations as well. Um, excuse me. Okay. Um, now, in addition to this, the Web2 interface also lets me see basically a um, bill of materials using this contains tab, which is over here. Contains actually shows me all of the references that this file is, is linked to. So the assembly has arm, pivot pin, handle mount, bolt pushing, all of these different things. And we can see that this basically looks like a bill of materials on the left hand side. So we can start to see other files that are affecting this assembly. So if I want to take a look at like, let's take a look at this arm pivot pin. If I click on this, it'll navigate me right to it. And again, it gives me the same option for e drawings. It doesn't boot up e drawings immediately, but it does actually show me sort of what I, you know, what I'm looking at. And then if I do actually want to boot up the e drawings interface, I just click on it and now I can move it around just like I could before. Um, now, similarly, it also has this where used list. So where used is kind of the opposite of a bill of materials is the way I like to look at it. So this is like, um, if I have a bolt and I wanna see everywhere that this is used, the web interface will show me all of the places that this is used, similar to the thick client interface on the right-hand side. Now I can also take this file here and I can check it out um, or I could delete it. I get Obviously, uh, the deleting and all this, these are permission-based. So I am logged in as the administrator right now, so I have the right to delete this if I want to. Your normal everyday users will not have that permission if you don't want them to have it. Um, so if, you, if you're familiar with PDM permissions, you don't have to worry about that delete showing up there. Um, and also, as far as being able to check out, all of this is permission-based. Now, in addition to being able to check stuff out and make changes to this file, I can also change the state of it. So the state is where it, where is it in its life cycle? Is this thing in concept? Is it a work in progress? So we can see here work in progress. 
or is it is it uh let me let me show you the back end here real quick so if i look open up this admin tool this is the tool that allows you to administrate the pdm now if you were to have the web interface you would actually use this same tool for the web interface the web interface really just taps into everything in this interface here so you're, you're if you're going to administrate the web you have to use the same tool to administrate it which is this so now as far as these states i'm discussing this is what's called a workflow. And I can zoom out and show you the whole thing here. It's, it's got some different pathways here, but basically what I like to call the spine here is sort of the main pathway that it takes. So work in progress is where files start and then they go into like basically an approval process here where you and your teammates would take a look and then somebody who has the ability to approve these files would be able to send it into an approved state, which would then assign a revision automatically and also do any number of automated tasks if you had them set up. Also, I should mention, there are two flavors of SOLIDWORKS PDM. There's PDM Professional and PDM Standard. Web 2 is only available for PDM Professional, which is sort of the upgraded version of PDM. And if you've used PDM previously, this was also known as PDM Enterprise. PDM Standard is a new flavor of PDM uh, basically to replace workgroup PDM if you've used workgroup PDM because they've set the sun on that software and no longer offer any installations or support starting uh, this year in 2018. Um, and so now with changing states here, with something in work in progress, I get a few options. So I have submit for approval here. If I scroll over to the right, I also have this transition right here is what they're called saying, Submit for customer review. And because I'm an administrator, I also kind of have this jump right here that says no approval required. A normal user would only really have the submit for approval or they would only have the option to submit it for a customer review given this workflow. There are many different kinds of workflows that can be used. So here's, a diff here's an example of a different one. Here's an example of another one. And each of these, control some sort of different process that a company may have for um, different parts of their company. So I've got quality workflows, I've got project workflows, I've got ECO and engineering change order and engineering change request workflows. Each of these do different things, right? But the one that I'm actually looking at for this particular SLD PRT file is this one called design documents, which is made to handle all of my SOLIDWORKS files. So what I can do is I can actually come in here and I can submit it for an approval. And I can add a comment here and be like, right, and then when I go ahead and hit change state, it's updating it. It reaches out to the server here and actually says, all right, success, I've changed state. So this arm pivot pin, if I go back into here and I go and look at the contains tab, and I right click and browse to this directly. Here's the ARM pivot pin. We can see that even on the, on the thick client here, so just in Windows Explorer, it's moved to pending approval, which was the next workflow state, but I did it from the web interface. So these change states, then I can go in and I can actually like say it's gone through its approval process, I can come in and approve this, okay. Say revision A approved. Oh, okay, so this is, sorry, this is also a demo vault, so I have a few um, a few things, but interestingly enough, I was able to submit it for, um, uh, I can change the state in the thick client here, and we can see it reflected in the web interface here, so I'll go ahead and say approved here, and then I'll say, and then I'll approve that. And now we can see that it's moved into an approved state. So if we go and we look at the data card here, revision A has been assigned. It was checked by me, and here's the date today. <laughs> Obviously, this vault's been around for a while since we started in 2015, but I've been upgrading it and running wacky experiments and all kinds of stuff on it. We can see that the material's been assigned, the weight, and if there were comments, I could add those in here. Now, I did add comments into the transition. So if I go and I look in the history here, 
we can see that this file now has um, revision A is approved. And then here is that comment that I added from the web interface. Hey team, please review this and approve it for release. So these now are working hand in hand, both from the front end and the web front end. Now, in addition to this, um, changing states and checking it in and checking it out and the contains and all this, there is also a mobile version of this. So if I had a cell phone, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this view to sort of reflect the size of what a cell phone would look like. And I'm going to click this mobile interface here. So now it switches over. And if you if you had, you know, your, your iPhone or your Android, you could, if you were on the intranet of your, uh, your um, business here, you could gain access to this. So what this allows you to do is while you're sitting in, you know, um, uh, on the ma manufacturing floor, you need to approve something, you know, right away. You can actually come in here and, okay, I can see the state is approved, right? And here's the, the, the thing. And then I can select the transition here from the, um, from the web interface from my phone. And that interface here, these options, so non-revision, change required, or EC required. Again, if I go back into the back end here, because it's sitting in approved right now, this is the state it's in. I have two options here. I have EC required, which we can see is that there, or I have non-revision change required, which if I scroll over to here, this is the other option. So from my mobile phone, I can come in and I can start typing in a comment here and be like, right, whatever I, whatever that is, right? Of course, it, it could be whatever. And now, now that I've, hit change here from my mobile phone, um, I can actually, I've moved it from approved into under major change. And we can see that there it is now. And now that could be, I could now send a message to my teammates and be like, hey guys, this is under a major change right now. Please go in and check it out. And, um, you know, let me know when you're done with the works and I'll approve it. And so um, now the, the interesting thing is, I, I tried to make it uh, clear earlier, this has to be on your intranet. So if you're looking to have access to this, you will need VPN access into your system. That's the easiest way to do it. There are ways to actually access this web interface from outside of your own um, domain, but really this is made to be used inside your domain. Um, there was a question just now about licenses. Let me uh, pull that up real quick. There you go. Okay, so let's hear, let's get to some questions here. So is this available for PDM standard also? Um, so I already answered that question, it is not available from P, for PDM standard. Uh, Web2 connects to SOLIDWORKS professionally, yep, that's already been answered there. So now also, does someone accessing Web2 platform take a license or pull from the floating licenses? It does require a license. So when, if I were to go, I'll show you on the back end here, the license structure. Um, so. Here I can get a glimpse of licenses uh, right here and license usage. So if I check this out, there are three different kinds of licenses for PDM. Um, let me switch this over here. So we can see that there's CAD editor and web, contributor and web, and professional viewer. So if there's viewer, that um, you can actually set the web up for just a viewer, but if you're trying to make changes or anything like that, you're gonna need this contributor in web and CAD editor in web. And basically my machine is set up right now uh, to use the CAD editor in web. And the way you select this is, let me go back to the full blown version here. So view full site, maximize this. I'll log out here and then go ahead and log back in. But right here, I've got web or viewer. So if it's, if it's selected as viewer, it'll use a viewer license. If it's selected as web, what it'll do is it'll grab one of these two types of licenses, and I believe, uh, I'll have to double check on this, but I believe it starts with contributor licenses because you're not using, um, uh, you know, SOLIDWORKS, so it would be, you know, not intuitive to use a CAD editor license, which is specifically for SOLIDWORKS users. Um, it'll grab a contributor license first before, if, it, if there's no contributor licenses available, then it'll grab a CAD editor. So we can see here that CAD editor is being used by admin, which is that view there. And then if I switch over to contributor, it looks like actually, oh, well, I did log out. So let me log back in here and let's see what goes on. Yeah, 
see here, now a contributor license was just pulled by default. So if I switch back over to the, the CAD editor license, we can see the a CAD editor license is, is taken. And then if I pull a contributor one, we see at 11.23, which is right now, this one was pulled for this web interface here. Hopefully that answers your question there. Um, now, what are some of the features of Web 2? Uh, the other, the way you actually check stuff out and check stuff in in Web 2, uh, the thick client here, if I minimize this, this actually is a, a caching folder. So by, by browsing to these files, the physical files are actually stored in this location on my machine here. So if I'm previewing this and I'm looking at this and I'm moving it around here, this physical arm.sld PRT file is actually stored right here in this folder. Now, if I'm on the web interface and I want to check something out, it's a little bit different. So what I actually have to do is I go here and I go to products, power tools, Omatra rescue tool. Now I've navigated straight to this. So if I want to check this out, um, I actually have to say check out. And then what it's going to do is it'll check it out. It'll give me ownership over this. But then what I actually have to do is when I have ownership, I have to download it. Once I download it, I make all my changes. And then I actually go ahead and say upload and check in. So I have to upload those changes back into the server. And that's because it doesn't have the ability to actually cache it on a local folder. It's all from a web interface. Um, so if you had a machine that was using um, uh, like SOLIDWORKS or something like that, it would have to be a PC just to download it. So if you're already using a PC, you might as well use the thick client. Now, the nice thing about the PDM system, though, is it's not limited to SOLIDWORKS files. You can use all kinds of file types in here. For example, Inflow, like one of our customers actually is a law firm, and they use the PDM system here to basically version control their legal documents. Um, so if I wanted to find like SOLIDWORKS drawings, or sorry, uh, doc files, which are uh, Microsoft Word, we can see here that I've actually got Word files in here, and I can even preview these Word files. Also, it, the PDM system does allow you to search um, the contents of those Word files, but that's called indexing. It's a little bit different system. And uh, But now I can actually come in and look for that as well here. And so here's all the, the Word documents. If I wanted to take a look at these, let's see. I can go and this. Now, I'm not sure if the web interface will actually preview these. Oh, it will. Excellent. We can see we get a preview of it, and it's got the data card information. Oh, but if there's no data card found, then you'll get that. So let me see if I can find one with a data card. There we go. Now, I didn't actually have any information filled out on this data card, but this would be the web interface of that data card. Um, so with that, that pretty much wraps up my demonstration of Web 2. Um, there's not much more to it other than that. In 2019, there are some um, some good changes that are happening uh, for Web 2. Um, for one thing, it's got responsive design, which means see here how this is actually kind of like cropped over and it's not really fitting. The responsive design will actually work better to fit this in here. Um, there's also a responsive login screen. So the, uh, the screen I was using to log in earlier will adjust to, um, uh, you know, whatever you're working on. Um, there is a responsive file list. So as I go back into here, as I stretch this larger and smaller, this will, I mean, it's already kind of responsive here, but, you know, see how it gets cropped there. It's fixed a little bit better in, in uh, 2019. There's also a navigation bar that's been added. So up at the top here, um, there's more options in the navigation bar. Uh, there is an action bar. So it'll have checkout, undo checkout, delete, change state, and download. It'll be available without having to actually hit this drop down menu here. They'll be updated in the action bar. Um, you can also resize columns a little better in that. They fixed that because uh, there are some issues with the responsive design in this one. Um, and, but they fixed it in 2019. And uh, now you can also, for uploading, you can just drag and drop a file into the upload check-in here, and you'll be able to upload it. The search bar 
uh, when you actually search, it has a little bit more sophisticated search, allowing you to search the current folder, uh, the current and subfolders, or just all folders in the vault. And the preview, um, the preview window, when you actually go here, this will also resize uh, the preview window to fit the current screen. So they've, they've made some tweaks to make it a little more user-friendly in 2019. Charlie, I want to thank you very much for spending time with us. I know you're a very busy guy helping out all of our customers with some, some good data management stuff. So really <laughs> do appreciate it. Um, we'd like to thank everybody for attending with us. Um, I've got a presentation I'm giving this afternoon, and then we've got two tomorrow, and we've got, what, 10 next week. So feel free to sign up for any of those and we'll, we'll see you on the on the next webcast.